Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Pick a fabric, any fabric. <laughs> We're going to make a very simple little clutch today with a wristlet strap, which if you wanted to, you could make it into a crossbody bag as well. And it's also going to have a little divider pocket on the inside. You can change the size of this if you wanted to use this for, say, a tablet bag and have it a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit wider as well. This one is going to be about 12 inches wide. So come along and I'll show you how to make this little fold over clutch with a wristlet strap that you could convert to a bag if you wanted to. Here's what we need today. I'm using furnishing fabric for the outside of my bag and I've actually stabilized all my fabric today except for the handle. For my main fabric and for my lining, we want 12 inches by 17 inches. I've got a lightweight fusible pallon on the wrong side of the main fabric. On the lining fabric, I've got a lightweight fusible cotton. It doesn't need much stability at all. It's only because we're going to be putting a little magnetic snap on. Otherwise, I normally wouldn't bother stabilizing my linings. 12 by 17 inches for my lining. For the pocket divider inside, I've also used just a really lightweight cotton fusible stabilizer or interfacing which is 12 by 12 inches and I have a swivel clasp, I have a d-ring and a magnetic closure and for the tab on the side of the bag and the wristlet we have got three and a half inches by 21 inches. This will be cut down so that we can get both pieces out of the one fabric. Take our main fabric and our lining piece and we'll place these right side together. We're going to stitch this and we'll leave an opening just here. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this whole project as well. Once you've sewn this short edge together and left an opening here, take it to your iron and just press the seams open along here. So we've got our little opening in the middle here. Go and press all of that open. Find something with a rounded edge, a coffee cup will do, and it doesn't matter what the diameter is of your circle either. At the other end of your fabric, so we've got our fabric stitched together at that end, this end here we have them open. Lay the pieces together nice and evenly. We'll place a curve of the cup around the edge of the fabric here. And we'll repeat on both sides. And then all we need to do here is just cut out the fabric along that drawn line just along here and leave it nice and straight at the top edge here. What our plan is, we are having the bag folded up like this. We'll have a pocket on the inside and we'll have the flap that comes over the top here. So we'll have the curved edge around both sides. If you prefer not to work with curves, then you can easily come up and mark a triangle along here and a triangle along here and you can have nice straight edges and you can have the flap of your purse tapered rather than rounded. So it's up to yourself which way you want to go. I'm going to stick with the curves. Now you can cut both of these out at the same time by laying the fabric together, finding the center, lining it up really well, pinning that and then you can just cut that curve at the same time then you'll know that your outside curves are exactly the same on both sides of your flap. So it's just a very slight curve. Take our 12 inch by 12 inch square, fold that in half, mark a crease, and then we'll draw a line straight across the center. Take your fabric and open it out. And we have this piece of fabric that we need to stitch onto our lining now. So have that nice and flat. Open this piece of fabric out and we're going to line up the raw edge here with the sewn edge along here. This section here is actually going to become the inside top front of our bag shortly. With this opened out, we're going to place the raw edge of the fabric here about a quarter of an inch from this stitching line just here. Line this fabric up at quarter of an inch from the stitching line. We can take this to the machine and sew all the way down here. Ah, 
Okay, we've got that line stitched there. We need to close this up now, but to close this up, we need to flip your fabric over, bring these edges together. We'll roll all of this up and take this flap here. And we've got this section here rolled up inside. Roll all of that up together with it. Then we'll take the opposite ends of the flap and we'll bring these edges together. This is kind of like the burrito roll method. So we've enclosed all of those layers of fabric inside this flap. And this is the divider section for the inside of our bag. We can take this to the machine and stitch all the way along there. And we'll back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, take the fabric out of this little tube now. and turn this the right way around. So open out the lining section, straighten this out, and now we have the inside divider section almost finished. All we need to do here is top stitch. Take the lining piece well out of the way, and we'll just go and top stitch right along the edge where that seam is. All right, we've got our flap in place. The top stitching is finished. We have our opening in the bottom of the bag there, which will actually come to the top. What we can do here, put some pins in on the lining at four and a quarter inches from the top edge. So I'm just going to put a pin in on either side. And I also want to find the center of my fabric here. So that's the center of my lining. And I'm going to measure down one and a half inches. We need to put our magnetic button on the bag and take the outer part of the fabric and find the center here as well. So this is the section that's got the opening in it. We want to find the center at the bottom here and from the stitching line, we'll mark two inches. I need a magnetic button here and the other side on here. So I'm just going to center my washer over the top I've marked the cutting line on one side and we'll mark the cutting line on this side as well. Put your seam ripper in at the bottom of the line and come back up at the top and just make a really small hole. And it's only going to be big enough for the prongs. We'll do the same at this end. It doesn't really matter which side goes where. This is my lining. I'll pop the prongs through there and then the washer can go directly over the top and I'll spread that open. And for the main fabric, I'll pop the button on from the outside to the other side, and then we'll open this one out as well. From my, um, from my wristlet strap, I've cut off a two and a half inch strip of fabric. What we're going to do now is start putting all of these layers together so that we can finish up this bag. Take the flap here, push that up toward the curve of the bag. This section of the lining will also go up. This will be the front on the inside of the bag. So we'll bring that up to where these pins are on the side, line that up, take the other curved edge of your main fabric and bring that up to the curved edge of your lining. And if you've got everything lined up properly, then you'll have the outside of your bag, the lining section of your bag lined up at the bottom. You'll have your flap on the inside. You'll have these facing, and then we can clip everything together. You can remove the pins on the side and continue to clip all the way down. So we're just about ready to sew the bag closed. Before we do that, we need to put our little tab on. If you take your D-ring and your tab, place that inside the D-ring, have the lining section faced down and the main fabric faced up, and then go into your bag here. And we're going to place this between the layers of the outside fabric, not between the layers of the lining. So I've got my main fabric here, and this is at fold at the very top edge. We want to place this with the ring on the inside, and we'll bring that about half an inch from the top of that fold. Put the clips back in place. Now we can take this back to the machine, and we're going to sew all the way around the entire 
outside edges of the bag. Don't sew this section here. This is how we're going to get into the bag later when we turn everything the right way around. So let's do our final seam from here. We'll do a back stitch, come all the way around, back stitch at this end as well, and then we can clip the curves and then we can turn our bag the right way around for top stitching and closing up. When I get to the layers here where you've got the fabric folded up, I'm going to back stitch over this a couple of times for added strength and then continue on around. Just make sure your D-ring is well out of the way of your stitching as well. Okay, you can clip into your curves or just trim really close to the edge of the stitching line. And now we can turn the bag the right way around. So find the opening in here and bring all the fabric through. Okay, once you've turned the bag the right way around and you've poked out your corners so that they sit nicely, we want to close up this opening here. So we're going to do a top stitch and we're going to top stitch this edge as well. You can see that little flat pocket or the divider pocket inside there. Take the lining and make sure it's on the lining side of the fabric. Just roll it to the back and we'll clip it in place so that we can top stitch this edge because we just want to see the outer fabric on the outside and then we'll fold these edges under try and get them as straight as you can and we'll clip all of these edges as well now when I top stitch I like to be able to see the top of my fabric I'm going to turn this inside out then as I go to the machine I can go and stitch along this edge here close up that opening then come up and around and stitch all the way down and around here until I meet up with the other side again. After that, all we have to do is our wristlet strap. I have a great little technique for the wristlet strap so that we don't have really bulky ends. Okay, let's see how this has turned out. Turn everything the right way around. If you wanted to make this as a bag or a crossbody bag rather than a wristlet clutch, you can actually put a tab on the other side and just make a longer strap so that you can wear it across your body. Let's go and make our wristlet strap now. Now I've just taken my handle straight to the machine and stitched down both long edges. What I haven't done is stitched all the way to the very end. When you fold your handles together, start sewing about two inches from the top edge here. So we want to leave this open, go all the way to the end and repeat for this side as well. And then when you stitch this side, you'll do the same thing. You'll only stitch two inches in from the fold there as well. So that means we can leave our fabric open at the ends. Take your swivel clip and place it over your handle fabric. Then open up the layers of your handle there, both sides, and line them up. The handle fabric has been opened all the way out. I've just clipped the edges together and I'll take that to the machine and stitch that down. So if you don't leave enough of the end open, it does get a little bit fiddly. Back stitch. And make sure it's open all the way across and back stitch at the end. So you can see that's sewn together all the way along there. And then you can just get your fabric and pull it out and you'll see that fold wants to go back in again. And this is how we can minimize the amount of bulk on our straps. Open the seams out. Just fold that fabric together so that the seams stay open and 
fold that in again and keep those seams pressed open. And then we can sew this section closed on the top and along the bottom as well. And repeat for the other side. Then take the swivel and bring it all the way to the join that you've got right here. The seam is just on one side of the swivel clip. To have it right on the actual edge of your swivel, it's a little bit bulky and doesn't look very neat. I would have it just off center. So we have the seam underneath about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the metal underneath. Then we'll sew that closed. And I'll just stitch over that a few times. There is our finished wristlet strap with a lot less bulk in it than you normally would if you were folding the edges over on the inside. And your swivel stays in place there. Clip it onto your bag. And there we have a nice little clutch with a divider pocket on the inside. And I've even managed to match up my stripes. Here's another one that I did a couple of days ago. This one here doesn't have the tab on the side. It also doesn't have a strap for the wristlet or a handle, but it does have that little divider pocket on the inside. This was one that I was just playing around with to see how the pattern would go. So no box corners, no zips, very simple little bag to make. Uh, I really like this stripy fabric. It's an upholstery fabric, but it's just a really nice, cute little stripy fabric. Anyway, very simple to make, just a couple of folds and a nice easy divider pocket on the inside of the bag as well. I wasn't planning on making these to sell at all, so I haven't bothered to label it. I think it probably could have done with a nice metal label on the outside. What do you think? Anyway, I like this bag. It's a cute little project, very easy. All you've got is a seam along the bottom and then basically you stitch up the whole bag in one go. So there's not much to it. You don't have to put the divider pocket in this bag at all if you don't want to. It makes it even easier to make. And as I've said, if you want to, you can put another tab on this side and easily make this into a crossbody bag or a handbag of some sort. I didn't have enough length in the fabric to be able to do that and that's why I've chosen to just make a wristlet strap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.